All right, YouTube, this video right here is going to be titled something along um, top 10 things you need to do when you start your weight loss journey or something like that. I don't, I don't know. Um, I got some things written down. And write, why did I write things down? Um, I'm usually making my videos off the top of my head because I have the knowledge. I don't worry about nothing. I just do the video. But I've done this right here so I can have bullet points. I'm going to still freestyle my video in, in rapid time fitness fashion, right? But um, it's a video that I have titled. All right, I'm not going to redo that intro. I'm, I hope they didn't mess up my video. There's some copyrighted music just went past me bumping for no reason. And they see you doing something. Maybe they don't know what I'm doing, but they just stop and they just look. Ooh, get away from me, man. All right. <laughs> but like the video, subscribe to the channel. What I'm trying to do is recreate the top 10 misconceptions about weight loss video that I keep on linking below that nobody's watching. So instead of keep on pushing that video down people throw, I'm gonna just go ahead and try to attempt to make videos on par with that. But this is not the misconceptions, this is what to do. That's what not to do. So after you watch what to do, I'm gonna link it below again and you watch the video about what not to do, all right? So the number one thing you need to do when you first start your weight loss journey numero uno number one the first day you need to weigh yourself whatever isn't measured cannot be managed all right so you don't you cannot set a goal an end goal let's say you was you don't even know how much you weigh because you don't weigh yourself but let's say you want to get down to 150 all right let me give y'all my goal my goal is to get down to 150 this year i want to get ready like absolutely <laughs> disappear weight all right so um i'm 180 right now uh, how do i know i'm 180 right now because i weighed myself this morning i weighed myself on it also you got to know how to weigh yourself you want to weigh yourself on an empty stomach you want to weigh yourself when you first wake up you want to weigh yourself before you eat anything if you have to use the bathroom whether it's number one number two too much information no it's not because you need this information get this build off of me man i can't even do this but you need this information all right you need the information you got to stop guessing all right don't guess your weight don't guess your calories don't guess your weight weigh yourself whatever is it measured cannot be managed and treat yourself like a business all right uh, or, or a car a machine you know how much gas is in a car how much oil goes in the car everything has a place so that's number one weigh yourself empty stomach pee dookie doesn't matter you don't want a lot of clothes on either you want to make sure you're weighing yourself a lot of people weigh themselves later on in the day you already ate how many meals you already drank how much water fluid yes water doesn't have calories so it shouldn't have made me gain weight everything this is a gallon of water you think this has no weight to it you put this in your body and weigh you weigh yourself without drinking anything then drink a whole bunch of water and weigh yourself you're gonna have a whole different weight every pound counts when you're trying to measure your body all right so that's number one um number two find out how many calories you're already currently eating all right how do you do that take yourself through yesterday we are creatures a lot of people argue with this right here it's not gonna get you on point perfectly you're not gonna get your perfect calories from this but it's better than nothing you want ballpark at least ballpark a ballpark measurement of how many calories you're already eating we are creatures of habit even though you might be eating different foods every day um, just like, okay, I just parked my car right here. I don't go here a lot. We're at Target, Lowe's. I just parked here to make this video, all right? But when I go to the gym, when I go to work, when I go to Walmart, when I go to the movies, when I go anywhere, to the zoo, anywhere that I regularly go, I usually end up parking around in the same spots, give or take. Same thing with your diet. Even though you might be eating different foods every day, you're probably eating close ballpark that's what i mean by ballpark close to the same amount of calories so take yourself through yesterday try to remember everything write it down as you remember okay when i woke up i ate that was breakfast da, 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 da. okay lunch was da, 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 da. then dinner da, 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 da. then try to remember your snacks drinks this and that and third 
the amounts. How much did you eat? How much did you drink? Then look up how many calories are in those foods. Write it down like a math. It's math. A lot of people say weight loss is, is mental or science and this. No, weight loss is math. I have a video literally talking about type in rep and time fitness. Rep and time fitness, math versus science. And I break it down what I mean by weight loss is math. All right. So find out how many calories you're, you're at because you need to be in a caloric deficit. You're already, if you're staying around the same weight, a lot of people talk about how do I find my maintenance calories. If you're staying around the same weight and you're eating almost the same amount of food every day, guess what? You're already eating your maintenance calories right now. If you're maintaining your, that's what maintenance calories mean. Maintain weight. How much calories to maintain where you're at right now. To, to diet, you need to be in a deficit. To gain weight, you need to be in a surplus. Here's maintenance. Here's deficit, here's surplus. Now the problem is, okay, here's you, here's your calories. The problem is, people be at maintenance calories and they know that they gotta get into a deficit, they go way down here. No, you wanna go right here. That way it's sustainable. That way you can stick to it. That way you're not hungry. That way you're not over craving. Another thing is, don't cut out all your favorite foods because then the two main things that's gonna make your diet fail is hunger and cravings. Hunger because you cut your calories in half. Let's say you found out you was eating 5,000 calories a day. A lot of people think that's very high, but guess what? Type in Rep and Top Fitness calories and look at my video proving how many calories people, I broke it down. I have these videos. People always ask me, well, I don't, I'm not going to try to further off track too much, but people always are asking me, why you don't make these videos? Why you don't make this? I made those videos. All right, so if you're eating 5,000 calories, you're like, dog, I need to get down to 2,000 calories. All right, so you jump right down to 2,000 calories. You just took off 23,000 calories. You just took 3,000 calories off your daily intake. Now you're going to be starving. And you're only going to do that for so long. You're only going to allow yourself to starve for so long. Willpower, if you're going off just willpower, everybody has everybody has a breaking point when it comes to willpower. It doesn't matter how strong your willpower is. It might take you months. It might take the next person days. It might take you years. But it's going to break. That's why people gain all their weight back. Because they was relying on willpower and they was trying to rush it. So cut that down gradually. Find out where you're at and then slightly then slightly cut your calories, all right? You're not going to take this car, for instance. You're not gonna learn how to drive today, right? And then tomorrow you wanna race in, in NASCAR? It doesn't make sense, right? Same thing with diet and exercise. You're not gonna start your diet today and then try to diet like some IFBB Pro or something like that. No! You need to know you so you can diet like you! <laughs> all right work out like you all right oh um, okay that takes me to i said find your calories um what else can i say about calories no we're gonna go ahead to the next one man that's two number three is walk and talk cardio yo walk and talk cardio all right start know your calories my thing is eat at maintenance or very slightly below i said start slow Cardio, also start slow. Why? Because you don't want to burn yourself out and you don't want to get injured. I tell a lot of people all the time, all right? I used to weigh 275, so I'm not talking about anybody's body weight. But if you weigh a lot and you just start off running, that's a lot of impact. Every time your feet hit the ground, that's a lot of impact. And it's going to be on your joints, especially your knees and hips. I tell people all the time, I told this one girl, I don't know how much she weighed, not to talk crap, but uh, she um, she ended up hurting her knees, her hips, her back, all of that, because she didn't want to hear, she didn't want to listen. I said, walk, just do a long walk. I don't want to do that because that's too slow. It ain't burning no calories. Yes, it is. Everything burns calories. Even me sitting here and doing this video is burning some calories. Your body burns calories by not even doing nothing at all. Believe it or not, that sounds crazy, right? How do how how do you think I got a six pack? 
because I know things that other people don't know or they just ignore. Some people know this stuff. So watch my walk and talk cardio videos. Um, I have the longer ones have the most information. The shorter ones are just me getting in my walk. You know what I'm saying? So uh, start slow. I don't do a bunch of running. All right. Um, also, I do a few other things like um, basketball with my son one on one. That's pretty much hit cardio because you running, walking, you you going up and down. As long as your heart rate is coming up and you active be moving you're burning calories and another thing about going too hard on, on cardio a lot of people end up staying the same. They, they do a whole bunch of cardio and they wonder why they can't lose weight this is why you cannot lose weight doing a whole bunch of cardio i'm not saying if you already are good at cardio and you already do a lot of cardio and you love it keep doing it you're actually doing a good thing but you need to if you're just starting this is for people who are just starting you need to work your way up if you want to if you're here doing nothing no disrespect, but if you want to be here doing everything, you don't go from here to here. You go from here to here to here. There's going to be like a thousand years before you get here. Grad that's what gradually means, all right? Um, but cardio will make you hungry, especially if you're doing hardcore, you're burning lots of calories, you're sweating, your heart rate's up. You think you done done something great. You did. You really actually did. I'm not saying you didn't. But the flip side, I'm just trying to point the flip side to that. It's going to make you hungry. Your appetite is going to grow. Um, which leads me to number four. All right, I should have put numbers on this. I don't, I don't usually do this. All right, number four is this. Don't wait until you're hungry to eat. Don't wait until you're hungry to eat. Now, for those who fast and those who are good at it, if you already are doing it and it's working, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, but for the majority of people, if you wait until you hungry, until you start you start eating when you get hungry instead of eating now to curb the cravings or in the hunger before it even happens, you're most likely gonna eat more food than you would have ate before. All right? If like Let's say I'm just waking up and I eat breakfast. Let's say I have 700 calories for breakfast, right? Compared to if I wake up and I say, nah, I'm going to just hold off and I'm not going to eat breakfast. I'm going to save those calories for later. When I finally do eat, I'm most likely going to eat well over 700 calories. I'm probably going to eat 14, 15, 1600 calories, all right, which is going to cut my daily calories in half, which means I don't have that many more calories left throughout the day I'm probably gonna go over my calories all right let's say I was shooting for 2,000 calories which I'm shooting for way more than that all right you need to find out where you need to be all right so if I'm shooting for 2,000 calories and this one meal if I had 1,600 if I'm going to stick to those 2,000 calories that means I only got 400 calories left so my dinner is going to be 400 calories that's nothing. I'm still going to be hungry. And I'm going to go to bed hungry. And every time I wake up, I'm going to go to the refrigerator. I know that's heading home for somebody. So that brings me to number five. Meals. Knowing how to eat. Knowing how to curb cravings. Knowing how to have low-calorie foods that also taste good. Repentine time fitness meals. I got videos about that. I got high calorie meals, I got low calorie meals, I got meals to give me energy for the gym, I got meals to satiate me when I don't have that many calories left. Look it up, type it in. As I'm telling you these videos, you don't have to watch them right now. Finish this video, type in the other videos. Now you got a whole list of videos to watch that's gonna get you through your journey, I promise you. Um, said meals. Remember, cardio makes you hungry. So knowing what to eat before, after, and during. Not during, you doing cardio and you eat. <laughs> you know, this ain't Planet Fitness, man. We don't eat, this ain't piece of planet, all right? So uh, knowing how to eat is more important than knowing when to eat. Um, how much you eat is more important than what you eat. Know that. All right? I eat, that's how I get away with eating dirty food. People always like, I seen you eating McDonald's. Yeah, yeah, six pack. Why? Because I know how many calories I need. I know when to stop. I know how to stay safe. I have a routine, which brings me to number six. Decide your workouts. 
all right me personally y'all see me doing crazy workouts y'all see me lifting crazy weights and this and that and the third when it comes to weight loss i don't go to the gym for weight loss i go to the gym for two reasons to build muscle and to build strength yes i'm still burning calories which is going to assist me in weight loss but i depend mostly on my diet even way more than i depend on cardio i depend on my diet my calories in versus calories out way more than i depend on my workouts because lifting weights is only going to burn so much calories all right so deciding your workouts depending on your goals and your abilities all right and what do i mean by abilities take for instance i don't do muscle ups why the time to learn it, all right? The time it takes to learn what exercise you're doing needs to play key in the factor of figuring out which workouts you're going to do. Why? All right, muscle ups, they build muscle. How much muscle? Is the is the reward worth the time of doing? When I could have do when I could do way more simpler things to learn how to do is like deadlift, bench, squat, some curls, overhead press, pull-ups. I could do all of that. Leg press, leg extensions, leg curls. Work my full body. And have months in of working my full body. Made some gains before I could even learn how to do one muscle up. So I wasted all that time. All that time doing this or all that time trying to learn how to do this. Which one is going to give me the most results? And in the end, which one is going to give me the most results? To me, a muscle up is a trick. Stop doing tricks in the gym. It's not about impressing somebody what, what you can do. All right? Your workout is your workout. My workout is my workout. If you see me in the gym, I'm not in there to compete with you. I'm not there to show off with you, on you. I'm not there for none of that. Do I dabble in some of that sometimes? Yeah, I do. Some people got to get put in their place sometimes. Effing with your boy. You know what I'm saying? But uh, the ability, okay, time that fits you, your routine. Time is very important, all right? What time you wake up, what time you go to the gym, uh, what time do you, your, your life, it has to fit in your life. A lot of people say they don't have time to work out because they got this, that, and the third. My job is 12 and a half hours per shift. I got good days off. I got this weekend off, matter of fact. I got all the time in the world. You know what I'm saying? I have no excuse to not hit the gym, so know your time know your strengths and your weaknesses when it comes to your time you got family kids school and job and this and that and third you might have to sacrifice some of the things you want to do you might have to sacrifice like me i don't watch tv i'm not in the sports i mean i got you know you might have to you know you might have to for your health and well-being you might have to cut some things out or cut them down all right let's say you go to the club I'm not saying if you love to go to the club, I don't go to the club. Well, let's say you did. It's up to you. But just imagine how much more you would like the club if you can go in there ripped. If you could go in there fitted in a, in a shirt that fits you or pants or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Going in there way more fit. Take time off. Just imagine how much you would love the club even more. If you take time off from being in the club, you're in the club every day. It's an everyday normal thing to you now. Okay, take a month from not going. Okay, you ain't been in the club in a month, two months, whatever. You're going to either love it or you're going to hate it. Or you're going to realize maybe the club ain't even for me. To me, the club is a negative thing. It's up to you, though. That's just my opinion, all right? So, which brings me to number seven. Friends and family. Friends and family can help make or break your routine and your, your, your journey, your goals. All right. I see a lot of people, well, that's my sister, that's my brother, that's my cousin, my husband, my wife, blah, blah, blah. And they take the advice. Everybody's going to give you advice. Everybody got tips for you. But if they don't fit the bill, in my opinion, you shouldn't listen to them. If y'all started at the same time, why are y'all teaching each other? It doesn't make sense. Now, y'all can go on a journey together. Y'all can learn together. But you both still got a lot to learn. You just started on New Year's, which I said don't watch Repetite Fitness New Year's. Type that in. All right? What I said, this year's New Year's video was good. 
Um, but last year's New Year's videos, doing the ones you need to watch. But um, Reppin' Time Fitness New Year's. Everybody started their journey on New Year's. This is what, March? You're already an expert? You just started on New Year's? And this is only March? You're already a, or your friend is already an expert? Get out of here with that. Um, <laughs> tradition. Bringing it back to the New Year's thing. Everybody want to traditionally do things at certain dates. Everybody want to do the same things. It doesn't matter if it works or not. Oh, I've been doing this for years. If it haven't been working, that ain't what works. You know? Or worse than tradition is fad diets, all right? This is the new thing. Oh, my gosh. Stop that. Just do Blank slate. That brings me to the next one. Blank slate. When I started my fitness journey. No, when I restarted, when I was born again. I had already been lifting and doing stuff for years and it haven't been exactly what I just said. All right, this is going to sound like a broken record. Exactly what I just said. I had already been lifting. I had already been dieting and doing all this and that and the third. But I was like the traditional average person who listens to their friends and family. And I wouldn't listen to anybody. My problem was I didn't listen to anybody. I only listened to myself. And at the time, I didn't know what I was talking about. The stuff that I'm saying now, I didn't have that back then. Um, one day, I looked in the mirror. Like, most guys, we look in the mirror, we flex, and we, you know, we look at it, the best lighting and the best this and that third. No, one day, I went in the, in the mirror, and I just let it hang. And I realized, yo, I'm 275, man. Because I thought at first, I'm 275. And I'm lifting and doing I I wasn't even that strong I thought I was. I didn't know what strong was. I didn't know anything. I had to realize that I didn't know. That's what I had to realize. Is if I'm not at my goal, if I'm not at my goal, physique wise, strength wise, whatever. A lot of people say, oh, that doesn't matter. You got to remember what you started for. If 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 you're on a weight loss journey, and you're serious? Losing weight actually matters. That's what the journey is. Who doesn't matter? I just feel good. <laughs> what? You on a feel good journey or you on a weight loss journey? All right. So that might ruffle some feathers, but I right, man, at the end of the day, wake up, man. I had to. I had to realize that everything I was doing was wrong. I had to swallow my pride and admit it to myself, not to anybody else to myself this is about me which brings me back to number one matter of fact we might roll back through those which brings me back to it all comes back around brings me back to number one weigh yourself i had to know i had to realize that you have to track you have to know where you're at to to even be able to track all right Remember, this is your journey, all right? Weighing yourself, you don't have to tell everybody. A lot of people, I don't want to um, get on a scale because I'm scared to know the number. I understand that. I do understand that. I'm not dissing. But knowing the number is very important. You don't have, everybody else don't have to know the number. That's up to you. You can do it alone in your own home. Forget about the rest of the world. Turn off your internet sometime. I'm a YouTube fitness influencer. I can't turn mine off. I need to. A lot of times I be feeling like, man, I need to get off the internet, man. I need to take a break. I desperately need a break, but I ain't going to do it yet. Because y'all still need my help. I'm doing this for y'all. <laughs> Find out your calories. Number two. We're going to go back to it. Number one weigh yourself number two find out your calories number three walk and talk cardio number four um find out your meals how to plan your meals number five decide your workouts um do your ability your goals time it takes to learn those workouts um number six um time time that fits your schedule find that out all right a routine number seven 
friends and family can make or break you so don't be listening to everybody if they ain't positive if they don't fit the bill i'm sorry they ain't the person you need to be listening to you can tell them in the nicest way like hey yeah yeah i hear what you're saying but uh repping time fit i'm listening to repping time finish not you got my face <laughs> but uh don't say it like that but uh um tradition if it ain't working it doesn't work i'm sorry um if it ain't broke don't fix it but being traditional and doing things over and over again the definition of insanity just keep trying the same stuff and expecting different results you got to keep that in mind also number nine ten i don't know blank slate erase everything you got on your board so you can write some new things on your board in your head so let's get into the video like and subscribe to the channel um, this is the top 10 things you need to do when you start your weight loss journey. Rapid time fitness, man. This is going to be deep. Might ruffle some feathers. But some feathers need to be ruffled. 